knowing how to tap into these plasticity mechanisms is very powerful. The brain is incredibly plastic from about birth until about age 25. And then somewhere about 25, there's a kind of tapering off of plasticity. You need different mechanisms to engage plasticity as an adult. So how can we get plasticity as adult that mimics the plasticity that we get when we are juveniles? The signal that generates the plasticity is the making of errors. It's the reaches and failures that signal to the nervous system that this is not not working and therefore the shifts start to take place. And this is so fundamentally important because I think most people understandably get frustrated. Like they're trying to learn a piece on the piano and they, they can't do it, or they're trying to write a piece of code, or they're trying to access some sort of motor behavior and they can't do it. And the frustration drives them crazy and they're like, I can't do it, I can't do it. When they don't realize that the, the errors themselves are signaling to the brain and nervous system, something's not working. And of course the brain doesn't understand the words, something isn't working. The brain doesn't even understand frustration as an emotional state. The brain understands the neurochemicals that are released, namely epinephrine and acetylcholine, but also the molecule dopamine when we start to approximate the correct behavior just a little bit and we start getting a little bit right. So what happens is when we make errors, the nervous system starts releasing neurotransmitters and neuromodulators. This would be epinephrine, it increases alertness, acetylcholine focus, because if acetylcholine is released, it creates an opportunity to focus on the error margin, the distance between what it is that you're doing and what it is that you would like to do. And then the nervous system starts to make changes almost immediately in order to try and get the behavior right. And when you start getting it even a little bit right, that third molecule comes online or is released, which is dopamine, which allows for the plastic changes to occur very fast. And so errors are the basis for neuroplasticity and for learning. And humans do not like this feeling of frustration and, and making errors. The few that do exceedingly well in whatever pursuits they happen to be involved in. The ones that don't generally don't do well. Now, this is what all happens very naturally in young brains, but in old brains, it tends to be pretty slow, except for in two conditions. The adult nervous system can tolerate smaller and smaller errors over time, but that you can stack those errors so that you can get a lot of plasticity. Put simply, incremental learning as an adult is absolutely essential. So how do you make small errors as opposed to big errors? Well, the key is smaller bouts of focused learning for smaller bits of information. Now, there is one way to get a lot of plasticity all at once. The plasticity as an adult can be as dramatic, as robust as it is in a young person, provided that there's a serious incentive for the plasticity to occur. How badly we need or want the plasticity determines how fast that plasticity will arrive. This means that the importance of something, how important something is to us, actually gates the rate of plasticity and the magnitude of plasticity. If we actually have to accomplish something in order to eat or in order to get our ration of income, we will reshape our nervous system very, very quickly. That points to the fact that it has to be a neurochemical system. There has to be an underlying mechanism. What are the specific behaviors that liberate particular categories of chemicals that allow us to make the most of incremental learning and that set the stage for plasticity that is similar enough or mimics these high contingency states like the need to get food or really create a sense of internal urgency, chemical urgency, if you will. You may have heard me talk about ultradian rhythms, which are these 90 minute rhythms that break up our 24 hour day. You want to keep making errors for this period of time that I'm saying will last anywhere for about seven to 30 minutes. It is exceedingly frustrating, but that frustration, it liberates the chemical cues that signal that plasticity needs to happen. And it is the case that when we come back a day or two later in a learning bout after a nap or a night or two of deep rest, then what we find is that we can remember certain things and the motor pathways work and we don't always get it perfectly, but we get a lot of it right, whereas we got it wrong before. So that seven to 30 minute intense learning bout, specifically about making errors errors. I want to really underscore that. Learn to attach dopamine in a subjective way to this process of making errors. Failing repetitively, provided we're engaged in a very specific set of behaviors when we do it, as well as telling ourselves that those failures are good for learning and good for us, creates an outsized effect on the rate of plasticity. It, it accelerates plasticity. And can I just tell myself that something is good when it's bad? Well, actually, yes. Believe it or not, dopamine is one of these incredible molecules that both can be released in response to the 
those very basic kind of behaviors and, and activities, things like food, sex, warm film or cold. But dopamine is also released according to what we subjectively believe is good for us. And that's what's so powerful about it. So make lots of errors. Tell yourself that those errors are important and good for your overall learning goals. So learn to attach dopamine, meaning release dopamine in your brain when you start to make errors. How often should I do this? And when should I be doing this? Chances are that you can't focus as well at 4 p.m. as you can at 10 a.m. It differs for everybody depending on when you're sleeping and your kind of natural chemistry and rhythms. But find the time or times of day when you naturally have the highest mental acuity. And that's really when you want to engage in these learning bouts. And then get to the point where you're making errors and then keep making errors for seven to 30 minutes. Just keep making those errors and drill through it. And you're almost seeking frustration. And if you can find some pleasure in the frustration, yes, that is a state that exists. You've created the optimal neurochemical milieu for learning that thing. But then here's the beauty of it. You also have created the optimal milieu for learning other things afterward. In order to access neuroplasticity, you need these components of focus, you need the component of attaching subjective reward, you need to make errors, all this stuff. And a lot of people find it difficult to just get into the overall state to access those things. When our autonomic nervous system isn't where we want it, meaning we're trying to be more alert or we're trying to be less alert, both of those feel stressful to people. Here's the, the beauty of it. If you are too alert, meaning you're too anxious and you want to calm down in order to learn better, there are things that you can do. So I'll just review them really quickly are the double inhale, exhale. So inhaling twice through the nose and exhaling once through the mouth. This is what's called a physiological sigh. It offloads carbon dioxide from the lungs. The other thing is starting to remove your tunnel vision. It, you know, when you use tunnel vision, you're very focused. That epinephrine is released by dilating your, your field of gaze, so-called panoramic vision. If you are too tired and you can't focus, well, then it's going to be impossible to even get to the starting line, so to speak, for engaging in neuroplasticity through incremental learning, etc. So in that case, there are other methods that you can do to wake yourself up. The best thing you should do is get a good night's sleep, but that's not always possible, or use a NSDR, non-sleep deep rest protocol. But if you've already done those things, or you're simply exhausted for whatever other reason, then there are other things, a cup of coffee or super oxygenation breathing, which means inhaling more than exhaling on average in a breathing bout. If you bring more oxygen in by making your inhales deeper and longer, you will become more alert. You'll start to actually deploy norepinephrine if you breathe very fast. So there are things that you can do to move up or down this so-called autonomic arousal arc. And what you want to ask before you undergo any learning bout is, am I too alert and I want to be calmer? Or am I too calm and too sleepy and I want to be more alert? You're going to need to engage in behaviors that bring you to the starting line in order to learn. So the first gate is to arrive at learning at the appropriate level of autonomic arousal. Clear and focused is best, but understand that you can be too tired in which case you're going to need to get yourself more alert or you can be too alert and you're going to need to get yourself calmer. Then you want to make errors. Incremental learning can create a huge degree of plasticity as an adult. And we talked about another feature, which is setting a contingency. If there's a reason, an important reason for you to actually learn, even if you're making failures, the learning will be accelerated. 